Sunday school because it is fun and the teachers are very nice. is Karin. I have uh, three boys. Aiden and Alden are my boys. Yeah, I'm Clement. I'm actually in uh, university now. I have two children, Gabriel and Tobias, and they are in Sunday school. I came into Sunday school about uh, three months ago. I'm married with two children. I'm 28 this year. I've been serving in Sunday school for close to about 16 years by now, I think. I saw that there's a need in the Sunday school. Uh, there's a lack of teachers, so I came in to help out to bridge the gap. I'm a full-time staff at CHS and Sunday school is my ministry, so it's not work. We have eventually been in this church since I was a little kid. Teaching has always been my calling and my kids are here, so it makes sense to just yeah, be here and just to help out wherever I can. What I learned the, the most from Sunday school is always the fact that whenever I was lost, whenever I needed help, I could always turn to God. I think the importance of actually saying a prayer that, that actually was the biggest takeaway that I could actually remember throughout my Sunday school life. Hello, everybody! <laughs> Do I look like the king of Egypt now? No. Yes. I am the king of Egypt! We need to actually read up our teacher's guide then we do a lesson plan so that we will know the flow for that lesson of the day. Then after that, we have actually had to Google uh, in the internet about what craft work we want them to do. Something simple yet they can remember. And the rest of the time, we'll actually be preparing all the craft like cutting, pasting. And then after that, the next step will be reading up your Bible, practice your storytelling and make sure that it is interesting to them so they will actually be attentive to you. I read up the lesson plan um, and then I will leave it one, two days, then I'll digest it again and I'll come back to it and then I'll start gathering materials. So it's like it has become a lifestyle in that sense. For me, what I do is with a lot of prayer for wisdom, for strength, you know, the ideas will flow. I usually do my work when the kids are asleep. The preparation usually doesn't take more than two to three hours. Yes, it usually doesn't because these are primary three and four kids. So um, I, don't, I don't have to do a lot of preparation for craft, cut it up and all that. They are all very independent. Yeah, so for my level, I would say a lot of creativity because I have different children with different natures. On the day itself, you come in early to prepare for the stuff yeah, before the lesson starts. Yeah, because you don't want to be rushing through when worship is going on. Personally, I, I do not want to waste time coming into a class where I'm not prepared and the kids are waiting for me to think of what I should do next. God has been good, God has been good, God has been good, has been good to me. From where? From Genesis, from Genesis, from Genesis 33, 11. I think first of all, you need to prepare your heart. <laughs> you need to really put aside um, all your distractions, right? And look to God and ask God how He wants to use you in this lesson. So I think first prepare our hearts and then set aside time to be creative in the, you know, in, in, in uh, preparing our lesson. Don't always stick to worksheets. I've also had to juggle with very busy working week and you know, the hours needed to prepare. But uh, it's a question of prioritizing. If this is going to be the commitment that you're going to have uh, with the church, then I said I would say do it wholeheartedly. Yeah, and uh, do not stinge on your time if you're going to commit to that. Um, realistically speaking, it can be quite difficult juggling both. And there are times where I've, I've also felt tired and worn out. But um, that's where prayer is needed. And I think in the Sunday school nowadays, it's quite good because um, you know everyone keeps in touch with everyone by email or text messages so you know you can always tap on people and to say hey I need prayer for this and that I, I, I know this week is very tough for me uh, I think that's that's helpful as well so I'd say draw strength from, from God and, and prayer because you're not doing this for yourself but actually you're doing this uh, for the work and for the glory of God I think um, parents also play a part in spiritual growth of children, of children. that's very important at home 
definitely parents would still uh, root them in, in Christian values but I believe that coming to school, uh, coming to Sunday school actually allow them to actually interact with their peers and actually, uh, actually see God's, uh, God's words from a more fun point of view. I mean now you've got more friends around you, you can make more noise. I, I mean not too much noise but it is, they can have more active discussion between their friends and also uh, there's always a teacher there that can actually like guide them and, and actually help them along. Uh, so this is a part where, where we see uh, that we c the Sunday school and the church come in hand in hand together with the parents. So besides the parents inculcating the values from Monday to Saturday, uh, the church as a whole will come in to assist on, on a Sunday to give a fresh perspective of how uh, the children should be brought up in a godly principle. I would say that Sunday school is more or less like a backbone because these children are our leaders in the next generation, whether you like it or not. So if, if they are equipped with God's word, and I believe that through it, God will use them in future um, to lead our congregation to the next level. And of course, we are trusting that God will use them to be God-fearing men and women after his own heart in future. I feel that it is important that they start young because uh, once the seed is there, uh, parents and teachers, you can work together to help it to grow. And no matter in the teens or yeah, later on in life, even if they deviate away, even if they um, uh, turn away from God, you know, but the seed is still there. They, they, somehow or other, they will just, we, we pray that it will just, the seed in there will, will grow and then they will come back to it when they realise that it is important to them. Yeah, we cannot, it's impossible that we say that, okay, with a good foundation, they will not turn away. But we hope that with it, that they will come back to it somehow. I think a, li a little goes a long way, uh, especially where um, incul inculcating the right values and the, the Christian message is concerned, uh, even if it's a one-hour class. And sometimes as teachers, we're not sure how much of the one-hour lesson they have actually absorbed. But you'd be surprised because um, I've always believed they may not look like they're listening, but actually the spirit in them is listening. And um, when push comes to shove, um, and when you actually ask them, you know, sometimes you actually elicit certain very surprising responses to show that they've actually listened to the Sunday school lessons. And some of the questions and some of the answers that they give when I ask them questions surprises me because, you know, it's, I, I never thought that they would be able to answer that way. We have to look beyond the surface. If you look at a, a child uh, purely on the physical side, their size, their age, I, I think it's not very fair because you, you cannot understand what they are going through and how they process information. Yeah, so I think for us to put a limit to what they can absorb or put a limit to what they can learn, I think it wouldn't be fair. So I, I would tell um, you know, people who hold the view that children can only learn this much and children will only know that much to look far and wide. They, they can absorb and they can understand beyond that which you can actually imagine. Yes, because I think that's what they are. They are just pure, true, innocent people. Um, and they absorb like a sponge. Yeah, they don't have a lot of reservations. They don't have a lot of inhib inhibitions, you know, anything to, to control, to, to restrict them, to, to want to receive. Maybe I share with you an incident which happened maybe about 10 over years ago. And uh, well, that was the time when I was diagnosed with a medical condition and uh, I have some problem with muscles and skin. And the Lord impressed upon me to get my Sunday school class and they are only preschoolers. In fact, they are just toddlers. And the Lord asked me to get them to pray for you. And I'm so encouraged because they would pray for me. And I'm very blessed because it is through their prayer, the Lord answered. And that's why I'm here today. I'm thankful to all the teachers for they are so devoted, caring and so loving. And thank you for staying away from all the Sunday services and to spend time with the children to guide them according to the God's words. Thank you to all the teachers. Well, we'd just like to say a great thank you and job well done to all the Agape Sunday School teachers for teaching our children about God's love and His will upon their lives. Thank you so much. Kudos to you all.